Of the fourth day of creation, it is written, Then Elohim made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Another set of the ubiquitous number three. The sun and the moon are not even named at first. They are only the greater light and the lesser light. It even seems like the stars were added as an afterthought. As there are three items here, surely there must be parallel to other lists of three items. In fact, we find all three items on this list, the sun, the moon, and the star, are objects of pagan worship. We read in Jeremiah 8.2, They shall spread them before the sun and the moon and all the host of heaven, which they have loved and which they have served, and after which they have walked which they have sought and which they have worshipped. They shall not be gathered nor buried. They shall be like the refuse on the face of the earth. Of course, Hasatan, the devil, will counterfeit everything and try and make it his own. How can we understand that the sun rules the day and the moon rules the night? The word for rule is from the root mashal, memshin lamed, the same root for the word proverb or example. Perhaps you recognize the name of the book of Proverbs in Hebrew, Mishle. We can say that the sun and the moon give us an example of the appropriate actions for each time period. When the sun is shining, it is time for work. At night, it is time for rest. In John 9.24, Yeshua is reported as saying, I must work the works of him that sent me. While it is day, the night comes when no man can work. I think it is easy to see that the sun would represent the father and the moon would represent the sun, that is, the S-O-N. In fact, in Malachi 4.2, which is verse 320 in the Hebrew, we find a scripture which is a bilingual play on these two words, sun and sun. But to you who fear my name, the sun, S-U-N, of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go out and grow fat like stall-fed calves. Although the Hebrew word there is shemesh, which clearly means sun, S-U-N, it is evident that the burning ball of fire in the sky has no intrinsic righteousness and is being spoken of here to represent something greater. Yes, the sun might appear to have wings as the rays which extend from the disk. On the other hand, the word for wings here, kinaphayim, is also used to refer to tzitzit in other places. These are the tassels on the edges of the garments which are prescribed in Numbers 1538, which are given as a reminder to obey the commandments of Jehovah. Obedience does bring healing. In Proverbs chapter 4, 20 through 22, we read, My son, attend to my words. Incline your ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life unto those that find him, and health to all their flesh. We are also reminded of the story of Naaman, Naaman the Syrian leper, who had only to obey the prophet's simple command, and was thus healed in Second Kings 5, verses 10 through 14. One way in which the sun differs from the moon and the stars is that it is constant, it keeps the same shape and the same time signature every day. Although the sun is a star, it does not appear to twinkle like the stars, nor does it substantially change its position in the sky across the seasons, as the stars appear to do. It is daily making the same circuit across the heavens, rising in the east and setting in the west. As it is written in Malachi 3.6, I am Jehovah, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Also in Psalm 103, verse 12, As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. The sun is also essential for agriculture and photosynthesis, the growth of plants. Perhaps you have heard of the Goldilocks principle, the idea that the earth is a perfect place for habitability. What are the parameters that designate that principle? Earth is the exact right distance from the sun, it is protected from harmful solar radiation by its magnetic field, it is kept warm by an insulating atmosphere, it has the right chemical ingredients for life, including water and carbon. The processes that shape the earth and its environment constantly cycle elements through the planet. 
This cycling sustains life and leads to the formation of the mineral and energy resources that are the foundation of all society. All these facets are recognized even by secular scientists who will not acknowledge their creator. Without Yehovah, there would be no life on earth. Isaiah 45.12 I have made the earth and created man upon it. I, even my hands, have stretched out the heavens, and all their hosts have I commanded. Specifically because the hours of the daylight do wax and wane during the course of a year, primitive people were inclined to believe that the sun might disappear altogether. Therefore they sacrificed and paid homage to it. Ezekiel 8.16 So he brought me into the inner court of Jehovah's house, and there at the door of the temple of Jehovah, between the porch and the altar, were about twenty-five men with their backs towards the temple of Jehovah and their faces toward the east, and they were worshipping the sun towards the east. But Jehovah told Noah in Genesis 8.22, While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. In places we see that the sun is used to represent a father quite literally. In Joseph's second dream, he explains, Genesis 37, 9, Then he dreamed still another dream, and told it to his brothers, and said, Look, I have dreamed another dream, and this time the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars bow down to me. His father Jacob correctly interprets that he himself is meant by the sun, his wife by the moon, and his other eleven sons by the stars. Another metaphor is written in Psalm 19, verses 4 and 5. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them has he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoices as a strong man to run a race. Who is this bridegroom, as it is written in Hosea 2.16, or 2.18 in the Hebrew? In that day, declares Jehovah, you will call me my husband, you will no longer call me my master. Of the fact that the Father in heaven will himself be the light in the new Jerusalem, it is written in Revelation 22.5, And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign for ever and ever. Accordingly, Isaiah prophesied in chapter 20, verse 36, Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days, in the day that Jehovah binds up the breach of his people and heals the stroke of their wound. How is Messiah like the moon? The moon has no light of its own. It merely reflects the sun. As in John 5:19, Then answered Yeshua and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the Father do. And what things soever he does, these also does the Son likewise. The rabbis, through their own understanding, have compared Messiah to the moon for this reason. He comes and goes at various times, and one does not know what shape he will take. From the Talmud, Tractate Sanhedrin 97a, As Rav Zera, who, whenever he chanced upon the scholars engaged in calculating the time of Messiah's coming, would say to them, I beg of you, do not postpone it, for it has been taught, three come unawares, Messiah, a found article, and a scorpion. The new moon in Hebrew is called Rosh Chodesh and is seen as a kind of second chance. In fact, the word month itself in English comes from the word for moon. The moon provides a monthly reminder, just as the moon is renewed from almost complete extinction, emitting not one iota of light, we are likewise destined to be renewed like her. David pleads in Psalm 51, verse 12, or 14 in the Hebrew, Restore unto me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with your free spirit. And Jehovah promises in Ezekiel 36:26, A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and give you a heart of flesh. The moon is an example of a type of light which exists in darkness. 
There are times when God is more manifest, and yet there are times when God's presence is difficult to discern. The Vilna Gaon explained this idea by use of a verse in Song of Songs, chapter 2, verse 9. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young heart. Behold, he stands behind our wall, gazing in at the windows, looking through the lattice. There are times that we feel God looking through the window, gazing at us. On the other hand, there are times where we barely feel God peeking through the cracks. Like the moon, the fortunes of Israel wax and wane. Sometimes there will be darkness, and sometimes Israel will shine bright. As it is said, all that happens to Israel will also happen to Messiah. At a low spot in the history of Israel, the kingship was entirely lost. Rabbi Nubahya, in the 13th century CE, wrote, In ancient times, Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, who was the president of the Sanhedrin in the 2nd century CE, once said to Rabbi Hiya, another member of the Sanhedrin, Go to a place called Ein Tav and sanctify the new moon there and send me a sign that you have sanctified it. The sign is David Melech Israel Chai Vikayam, a phrase which comes from the Talmud, tractate Rosh Hashanah 25a. Honestly, in researching this, I thought this quote was in scripture, but in fact it is not. This forms the background of the statement, David, king of Israel, is alive and well. The editor notes, Renewal of the moon is reassurance concerning the renewal of the active dynasty of David. Why did Yehuda Hanasi request that the message of the new moon be given in code? Because it is well documented that the Samaritans brought confusion for the declaration of the new moon by lighting their signal fires at the wrong time. This is the aspect of long life that Mashiach will attain, the aspect of Psalm 21.4. He asked life of you, and you gave it to him, which is the aspect of David, king of Israel, is alive and well, for David is Mashiach. This is a teaching from Likute Halachot, a Breslov teaching, commentary on the Shulchan Aruch. How clearly these scriptures and commentary parallel the two comings of Messiah. Two thousand years ago, as Messiah, son of Joseph, he came as a small, helpless baby. Nonetheless, through his short life, he brought the light of salvation to the people of Israel. And then he was gone, but with a promise to return. When he reappears as Messiah, son of David, his coming will light up the whole sky, and everyone will acknowledge his authority and supremacy. As it is written in Matthew 24, 7, for as the lightning comes out of the east and shines even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And in verse 30, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. If you thought, after this, that I will compare the stars to the Holy Spirit, well, no. Earlier in Genesis, we saw that the stars represented people, the eleven brothers of Joseph, the beginning of the Israelite community. In Revelation 1.20, we see the stars represent angels of the churches, and the churches are represented by the seven candlesticks. We should remember that in both Greek and Hebrew, the word angel just means messenger. Quoting the scripture, the mystery of the seven stars which thou saw in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels or the messengers of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which you saw are the seven churches. I believe that in general the stars represent the rest of the divine family of which the congregation of the saints is a crucial part. As it is written in Philippians 2.15, that you, that is the believers, may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. Also Daniel 12.3 And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as stars forever and ever. Thus we understand Psalm 136 verse 9 the moon and stars to rule by night, for his mercy endures forever. The moon, 
the Messiah, and the stars, the believers, rule and reign together. As it is written in 2 Timothy 2.12, If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. And again in Revelation 20, verse 6, Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and Messiah, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Where to shine when the times are dark, like little suns in the night sky, to declare the beauty, power, and majesty of Jehovah, as in Psalm 19. It is also written in Judges 5.31, Thus let all your enemies perish, Jehovah, but let those who love him be like the sun when it comes out in full strength. So the land, at Deborah's time, had rest for 40 years. But we look forward to rest for eternity. And the sun.